I'm at my mum's house today and she requires her dimmer switch to be changed, so that's a job for her son. Safe isolation procedure in this video. This is a Lloyd switch, I thought it'd be a little bit different. I've seek permission of uh, effectively my mother that I can turn off the supply. So I now need to investigate which circuit to turn it off. Now drop it down, we can see a full row of stickers here and hopefully they're correct. And we've got a noise sticker here that says downstairs lighting circuit. You'll note that it's not an RCD. When this was installed all those years ago, it wasn't a requirement. Again, that's a conversation for a different video. So hopefully when I turn this one off, the lighting circuit in the living area will go off. Now I've left them on. So obviously when I drop the breaker out, I can see that they've gone off. And that's a first indicating point to me that maybe I've selected the correct circuit. If this was a really heavy drawing current load, I probably wouldn't want to be switching that off at the breaker. By turning off hopefully what we believe is the correct six amp type B circuit breaker for the lighting circuit. So it just requires us now to lock this off before leaving the area. Now the temptation, isn't it, to go rushing into the living area just to see those lights are off. But we're gonna do this process correctly. That means that even if we've got the wrong circuit, we're gonna secure the isolation. Okay, we're gonna put the lock in place and the sign before leaving this area and obviously check in to see if those lights have gone off. So I've got my safe isolation kit out. I've got my lock and key. I've got my locking off device and I've got my tag. And you'll notice here there is a QR code. This is because this is something that I give away a part of my e fix YouTube channel. If you haven't already started following that, I recommend you do. And it's got a brilliant website, efix.co.uk, with loads of free learning packages on it. And this QR code will send you through to the free learning package on safe isolation, meaning that when you complete that training package, it takes less than an hour, you get a certificate, which is fantastic to go in your record of achievement, whether you be an apprentice or whether you be a full-time learner trying to get a job in the electrical industry. And on the know-how page where all of these free training packages sit, there's over 20 that you can tackle. Imagine going for a new interview for a new job or a promotion within a company and you can show all these additional certifications that you've got. That could be a real winner to you. I need to wind this back allowing for the breaker element here to go inside here. So we're going to wind this back. Let's wind that one out and then we're going to lay it on top of the circuit breaker and then all we do then is wind it back down to clamp on top of it. Once we've got it firmly clamped into position We'll just roll it out of the way so we can insert our sign and a locking off device. So that's nice and tight. I can't pull it off. I pull down the bar like there. So that's now in place. But somebody could obviously unwind this. So we must make sure we secure our isolation. So if I take my padlock and my sign and just bring it through here. It's quite small these are. Even though we're giving them away. Probably could have done with a little bit of a bigger padlock. Take out my key. And then I just need to hook that into there and close up. My device, there we go, we locked it into position. So we've got our locking device off on the circuit we think it is. We've got the key that we're gonna keep in our hand. We're gonna take it with us. We don't leave it anywhere around this area. We're gonna to need to keep this with us and we've got a sign. And if we had to, we could add some additional information on here, but we're not going to for this one. So that's locked securely into place. Key with me. Let's go and see if the lights are turned off. So the lights in the living area now have gone off, but it doesn't mean that actually we've isolated the correct circuit. Something else could have gone on. So we're still gonna, presume that the circuit could be live and do all the necessary precautions to prove at the light switch that this circuit is isolated so the dimmer can be changed. So I'm gonna take off the dimmer that needs replacing. Again, still be careful because obviously if it is still alive, we think it isn't, but we're only presuming it isn't. So we've got to be very careful when we're pulling things back off the wall. Obviously you don't want conductors to fly out. And if they do, certainly don't touch them until you've proved that the circuit is isolated. And as we look in here, maybe from previous study programs, we can work out that this is actually feeding the switch. So you can see the neutrals there at the back, they're in old cable colors, pre-2004, so the neutral is black. The supply has been taken down to the light switch, which makes logical sense because obviously they're fancy light fittings. In other words, probably not got a lot of room behind them in order to make those connections. So we're gonna to need to prove in here that this is actually isolated and dead before changing the dimmer. So I've got my approved voltage indicator and proving unit that I need to check it on a known supply or a proving unit before I start. So I'm gonna use my voltage indicator here to prove that it's actually correct. We've covered GS38 many times on the channel before. And if you're unfamiliar with it, I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. So I'm gonna prove these are working correctly with my proving unit. I'll push them into the holes like so, and we can see off, uh, off limit or off range, and all my lamps are illuminated on my voltage indicator. Okay, and we're happy that we're ready to use this. So we've got to prove it works first, 
and then we're going to use it and again we're going to prove it at the end of the process as well. So I'm going to probe onto my least dangerous conductor first which is my CPC and then I'm going to probe onto the line connection. Now this is the one that's linked from here to the other side so I'm presuming that's the common or permanent line coming in and it's linked to the other side of the two gang dimmer. So I'm going to go on to that next and we've got zero volts. Okay so we come off the line and then we're going to go on to this one here which is the switching line. You've got a beep on the machine but zero volts. Okay, so we come off that one again. Now we're going to turn it round, again being very careful that you don't pull any conductors out. We've got two connections here as well. We've got the, the common loop coming through, but we're going to test it as well. So we're going to go on to there. And again, no voltages. And onto this one here, again, no volt. So off we come. So that's tested between the circuit protective conductor and the line connections within the light switch. We don't know which one's permanent line, but we're presuming we know what it is. That's still not good enough. We've checked all of those connections. None of them show a voltage on our instrument. Next, I'm going to check between the CPC and neutral. So if we come into here, a little connector block, and I can just push firmly into there. And we've got zero volts. So let's just show it there got that beep connection that's because of the earthing arrangement system we've got here but there is zero volts then we come off our neutral and now we're going to test between our neutral and the line connection so we're going to go on the least dangerous one first which is our neutral connection just there firmly in and I'll go around again so no volts no volts come around to here onto the switch Again, we've got that beep, but we've got no volts. And last but not least, that final connection there. And then we're off our line connections and then we come off our neutral. But that's us gone round all the connections in here. So between our neutrals, our lines, our CPCs and neutrals, and our CPC and line connections, but we're not finished yet. It could have been that our instrument had failed us, okay? It could have uh, packed up in some way. So we need to prove this now is still functional at the end of the test. So simply bring our proving unit back in. And we check again, and we can see we go off the, off the limit or off the range on the instrument. And there we go, we've proved our voltage indicator again. We are happy now that we've proved our test instrument at the final stage that we can start changing this dimmer switch.